In the word of God here in Proverbs chapter 27, <clears throat> there's both here an observation that's made, but at the same time, not just ob uh, observation, and, and when I read the verse, you'll understand what I'm talking about, <clears throat> but inspiration of God that I identify, and you, and you know this too, that a lot of times when the Lord Jesus was going to give a great heavenly truth, that he'd use an earthly window to show that. Right. And Solomon here, and here in the book of Proverbs, you'll note that he's identified here in the book of Proverbs as being uh, after God's heart or being, being a wise man, wise king. Then when you get to the book of Ecclesiastes, you'll find him as an individual trying to live life to the full, but he's living it, trying to live it without God. And you'll find him in the middle of the chapter, in chapter 2, that he said, I dove into life headlong. He said, I come up empty. He said, I hated life. So here in the book of Proverbs then, we have a, a, a proverb that he gave identifying not just what I'm going to read about, but identifying the application of that in every one of our lives. Look with me, if you will, down in verse number 8. Proverbs chapter 27, verse number 8. <clears throat> The Bible said, as a bird that wandereth from her nest. Now, I had, I had studied this and preached this many years ago, and just here recently, the Lord really lit some things up in my heart here concerning this, uh, 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 here about the bird. That did you know, and I didn't until I got studying, looking at it, just reading, finding just little old nuggets about it, did you know that there is a bird's nest that will weigh over three tons? Wow. You know that? Now that's the bald eagle's nest. Now that, that is a nest that they will use over and over again. But did you know this too, that there, there is a bird's nest that is smaller than a sewing thimble or is as small as, a sew, uh, as a, uh, uh, just a sewing thimble? And you look at that and you're like, my goodness, but God made those birds that for that to be their home and correctly identified uh, uh, too, that they're only going to use it for just a little while. But uh, there's a purpose in that little while that God gave them that ability to build that nest. Now the Bible here talks about a bird wandering from the nest. Now that word wandering there, you know this, that, that doesn't give us the picture to start with of being driven from or something frightened it to make it leave. But this is a bird that has an obligation, by the way, these ten commandments that God set back in creation, by creation, that have never been broken. And then these ten commandments that God gave to man that's never been kept, amen. So then for this bird then to leave that nest and that opportunity and that obligation that's been given that bird, then that bird is in trouble with God. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, way back in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible put that bird or God put that bird on that nest and in the early days of creation, God said for them to be uh, 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 fruitful and multiply. And so God's the one who put that in that bird to start with about that nest. Now, some things just about that bird and that nest. That bird uh, doesn't just pick out the place. When God told them what they were supposed to do, then God put the ability in that bird to be able to build that nest in a place where it was going to be protected. All right, and then not just a place of protection, but it was going to be a place where provision could necessarily be come by pretty easily, pretty quick. Now that bird, you know this, evolution's been kind to them birds, amen. I'm only joking, amen. I'm not, 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 I'm not an evolutionist, you know better. But God's the one who put that in that bird. Every one of us, even from the children to the adults here, we've happened up on a bird's nest. We look at that and we're like, my goodness, how in the world did that bird know how to do that? Well, you know that bird ain't got that much sense, amen. But God's the one who put that in that bird to know how then to construct that nest. But not just how to construct it, but where to put it. Listen, uh, uh, 
as you go in and out and around the buildings just, just anywhere, everywhere there, there are even some birds nests that are made out of bird spit yeah. amen and it is served in high class restaurants and it's called bird spit soup amen I, I, I just prefer chicken noodle soup myself amen but the, these are these are constructed by, by God giving that bird that ability to do that so then when that bird in everything that God has provided for them and given them that place of not just of uh, that God's put it in them but, but then there's going to be a deposit that's made into that nest. Everybody here knows that. There, there are going to be some little eggs that's going to be laid in that nest. Well, then God put it in that bird. Then not just lay those eggs in there and leave them. You know how Solomon talked about the ostrich? Yeah. That God had deprived her of wisdom that she hides her eggs in the dirt or down in the dust of the ground. But these, as we're looking at here in the scripture, that these, uh, these are laid there, these are placed there, not just for the time, but that there's going to be a generation that's yet to come. Now, here this bird is, as a bird that wandereth from her nest. I'm trying to establish something, so stay with me. That everything that she's doing here, or that uh, also in um, uh, studying this about this nest, is not just to her, but there are times when they alternate the uh, uh, male bird and then the female bird. Now, she's going to put the eggs there. But then that when she needs to go do something else, go buy groceries or whatever, then, then the male bird is to sit there on the eggs till she gets back. And all the men said, praise the Lord right there. Yeah. Right? So, so you say, preacher, what are you saying? I'm not just preaching to the men. The scriptures here are not just talking about the men. The scriptures here are talking about the ladies too. Both of us. Both of us together. All right? But then all of a sudden, as a bird that wandereth from her nest, whether it be as big as a sowing thimble or it's three tons worth of a nest. All of a sudden, I don't think I like this no more. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I don't think I want to be here no more. I don't think I want to do this no more. You say, preacher, that ain't going to do that. Oh, yeah. When you read the rest of that verse, that's in context. That there's, there's something that's fixing to happen there that's going to not just endanger that nest. Matter of fact, that nest is not even the one that's in danger. But there is a picture there in that nest. That God told them how to, God taught them, God put that in that bird, in that little old nest. And what needed to be done, not just for that time, but even for future generations, as a bird that wandereth from her nest. All of a sudden, she just says, or he says, I'm done. I'm gone. I'm going to do something else. That word wandereth there means, means to leave and to rove, to and fro. It means to wander. And it means to just be away, just be off, just... And there's different uh, uh, synonyms that goes with that, and it's it, it just it identifies one that we don't want to be. But how much of us? How many times? How much time has been wasted on thought that boy? If I could just get man, if I could just if I just had if I just and I'm telling you, the Bible teaches us. Solomon said. By observation again and inspiration that Solomon said better is the sight of the eyes yes. than the wandering of the desire. Hey, Solomon even identified this, this individual as one being the one that wandereth. He identified him as finally wandering out of the way of instruction and remaining in the congregation of the dead. None of us have ever set our sail to sail away from God. None of us ever have. But my friend, you won't ever do no better than what God's given you and where God's placed you. You won't ever do better than where God's put you. You can't do better that bird saying, I don't want to do this like this no more. Man, that's going contrary to the nature that God put in her. And for you and I, when God has settled it in his will and in his word, when God settles that, and for you and I to say, I don't think I want to do this no more. What's wrong with society? Yeah. Right. Mercy. Right. 
Wow. My goodness, the handprint, the fingerprint of the Word of God and of the work of the Spirit of God. They're trying to unwire and rewire the next generation coming on. Yeah. That they really don't want to do it like that no more. Listen, you line up with God and God's Word. You come and go God's way or you wind up in the devil's hell. They not no other way to go than how God has established it. Amen. As a bird that wandered from her nest, so then she's off that nest. She's out on the limb. Mm. Yep. Proverbially, but she's in danger. Right. Not just her, but she's in danger also once she's left in that nest. Yeah. Right. Right. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, as you look at that bird, there'll be other birds that are predators. They'll either come there and ruin those eggs before they hatch or that they will come in on those young. They'll kill them. So then, it's not just, I don't want to do this no more. It's not just, I'm leaving this spot. It's not just, I'm going to do something else. Brother, it's what you're leaving unprotected. It's what you're leaving exposed there. That Think about it like this. That baby or, or that mama bird, she just flew down. Around the tree, didn't go far. Wasn't down just, just a minute or two. But then, buddy, she comes back up and there lays a snake coiled up in there. And those eggs are done gone or those hatchlings are already been, been devoured. Or she comes back and she didn't know that the landscaper was coming that morning and that, that, that man, that tree was going to be felled or that portion of that bush was going to be trimmed and she comes back and now then that everything that she had just a minute ago, I just, I didn't leave it but just a minute and she comes back and it's, it's gone. And don't take just a minute. The Bible said as a bird, so is a man. So is a man. Now you say, preacher, what are you talking about? Let me ask you a question. What's happened to this generation that's coming on? And we can't put all the blame on them. Right. Right. Amen. The generation prior to, leading into. Somebody's left their post. Right. Somebody's left the net. Somebody's left the next generation coming off. Somebody's left them without protection. Somebody's left them without that being there necessarily to bring them on into maturity. As a bird wandered from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. That place is a standing spot. I don't remember who it was. It, it was a preacher, and I just read this, but it was back back in 1500s, I think, somewhere back through there. This, it, was, it was a famous preacher that we well know that him and his son were going to town, and he said, I've got to take care of some business at, and he said, son, you stand right here by this gate. And he said, when I get done, finish up with my business, he said, I'll come back right back here to the gate. And he said, we'll start our journey back home. Well, the preacher went and took care of his business and forgot about his son. And made the journey back home. Got home, it was dark. And the wife said to the preacher, said, Where, where's... And he said, oh, my Lord. He said, I, I told that boy... He said, surely I would have thought that he would have come on back home by now realizing that I just forgot. But he said he went back. And he said, right where he had told that boy to stand. Yeah. There that boy was still standing. And he said it was dark. He left him there all day long. He left him there without any kind of money to transact. Or he just left him with the instruction, son, stand right here. Son, stay right here. Don't move off. Stay right here. When I come back by here, you be right here. Brother, the Lord has given every one of us that, listen, that 
description and that definition that God said, hey, where I've stood you like I stood you. You may, That's what Paul said. Paul said, I finished my course. Paul said, I kept the faith. He said, I didn't change lanes. I didn't change Bible. Paul said, I'm finishing just like I started. Man, moving off of my spot. And there's a lot that are. Boy, I ain't, I ain't going there. A lot jumping the fence today. As a bird wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. So that, that place, standing spot, right? That nest is chamber or dwelling, uh, including the baby birds, the little nestlings that are in there. You move off of your spot, Dad. What does that mean for your family? You move off your spot, Mom. What does that mean for your family? Not just them that are under you. Not just them that are there with you. But what does that mean to the next generation? And so down the line. Good Lord. Listen. Just by one. Just saying, no, we're not going to. That's a fad. and We're not going with that. That's going to change out there in a little bit. And we're not running with that. We're going to stay with. Yeah, but they're saying we're un. They're saying we're not cool. They're saying this boy, you ought to move up to that, and you need to move. Listen, it's a tactic of the devil that Satan's used on man since the garden. Hey, there's greener grass on the other side of the fence here. Every time that anybody's ever moved over to investigate, it, listen, when you get on your tiptoes or get down on your knees to look through the knot hole. You already know that the grass ain't greener on the other side. You already know they not nothing there. That's worth you getting out of God's will. They not nothing worth you meeting God like that. Amen, amen. The trouble that will come. As a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. That, that wandering there, it does not give even a picture there. It doesn't give the picture of somebody being driven out. It's just... I, I think I'm almost going... I'm tired of sitting here on these eggs all night long. I'm tired of sitting here in this hot sunshine. I'm tired of having to be sure that them eggs has got to be rolled ever so often. And Listen, God put all that in there. God put all that in that mama bird. God's one done all that. So then for us, as the observation's been made, and then the practical application, brother, it preached last night as good as you ever going to hear it. I think I'm just going to, I'm going to let somebody else do that. I'm going to let somebody else. I'm a, it's a determination that's been made to start to not be driven away but to just say I don't want to do it like this no more. What happened? Well as you look at that bird and I'm just scratching the surface you know that. You look at that bird and then you look at your life. And that's what Solomon's doing. That's what the Word of God's doing. Making the same application. That man thinks, well, I just run over here. I just hop the fence here. I just do. I just, that lady. And then she turns around, thinks I'm going to go right back. He goes right back. Think everything's going to be just. And it ain't going to be. That's what's been saying here in the Word of God. A man's plays. It may not be important to you. It may not mean much to you, but it means something to God. Amen. Amen. Think about that place. Think about that wife, that husband that God's given, that family that God's given you. Amen. Brother, God give you, God entrusted you with the best gift for you that you could have. Think about that spot where God's given you to pastor, that God's given you to serve. Brother, God could have literally picked anybody out of this country and put them there. But God put you there. 
that means something to God. Don't you back up off of it. Don't you waver. Don't you wobble. Don't you get out of the will of God. Don't even move a fraction out of that spot that God said stay right there. It's a danger. And it's called dereliction of duty. And that's what's happened here. A wandereth, wandering. It's not to drive away from the nest. Matter of fact, you come up on a mama bird if she's a killdee or a quail or you find them on the ground. And you come up on them, boy, they'll make like they got a broke wing and man, they'll drag it off out through yonder and don't even worry about going after that mama bird look down at your feet. Yeah. All them little old quail will be right there. Right. Amen, them that mama killed it. You get too close, brother, that chicken's nest. Or, man, they'll bow up on you and like, don't you come no closer. Yeah. You get a little closer and you'll find out real quick. Right. Yeah. You better back off, man. <laughs> Amen. But that bird that just says, ain't worth it. I'm not just leaving the nest. I'm leaving what's in the nest. I'm not just leaving the nest, leaving what's in the nest, but I'm leaving my determined place by God. I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it now. And it's just wandering. And that wandering individual, Solomon identified it here again in chapter 26, verse 2, as the bird by wandering and the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Preacher, I just don't know what's happened. Brother, these calendar months that you can watch your calendar, they, they, they just about times that you can watch your clock on the calendar and you can just know when them birds that's migrating, man, you can watch for them. Here they come. Right, right, right. God saying, you put your hand in that hole. God saying, you reach over that fence. God said, you reach and get that fruit off of that tree. And death's coming. Right. So the curse causeless shall not come. There's a reason. And it's by that, that wandering, wandering, just, just aimless, wandering. Nobody ever set their sail to say, I'm done, I'm gone. We, but just little by little, we just wander off our spot. And we get in trouble. As a bird wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth not from a place. Hey, what's the Bible said? Wandereth from his place. That place wasn't supposed to be nobody else's. That place wasn't supposed to be occupied by somebody else. That's your place. That's your spot. Don't get off of it. Amen. Thank you, preacher. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.